Hi, I want to tell you how to get a better grade on your question 4 answer for the exam for language. Now a lot of you score between 5 marks and 10 marks or so on the exam and that is not good enough to guarantee you a C grade overall. There are three things that you can do to improve your chances of getting a better grade on a question 4. And I'm excluding here actually practicing the question, although I think that would be a good idea. The first thing that you need to do is make sure that you can spot language features in any text. It doesn't matter what the text is. If you read in the back of a serial packet, if you're reading an encyclopedia entry, if you're looking at Facebook, look for language features. Can you see any alliteration there? Can you see any repetition? Is slang being used? Has someone used long words, polysyllabic words, in order to sound particularly intelligent. What are the language features and why are they being used? Who is the audience for that particular text? The examiners will have deliberately chosen texts that are aimed at different audiences and written for different purposes, and they are wanting you to put the two texts side by side and say, this is different, and you can see that because of the language. They both use the same language features, perhaps, but they're using them in quite different ways. And you need to be able to hold the texts apart and show that you can see how they're different. A poor answer that is trying to compare will talk about uh, one text being more interesting than the other, or one text being better than the other, but they won't really give any detail in terms of language. So the first thing you've got to do is be able to spot those language features. Don't assume that the language features will always be tripartite sequences or metaphors or alliteration or repetition or uh, interesting verbs or uh, lively adverbs. You need to actually look at the text. The way you practice this is by reading lots of text and annotating them for language features. Why not do a whole sheaf load of annotations Pass them my way, I'll have a look at them and see whether they're actually um, accurate or not. Um, if you make any mistakes, I'll be able to spot them and then you can improve your knowledge. The second thing you need to do is you need to actually plan your answer. Once you've got the two texts you're going to compare, once you've chosen which source you're going to compare with source 3, you need to do a little plan and you need to work out, OK, so you've spotted the language features, you've annotated the texts for language features. What are the main themes here, what are the connections? Both texts are using quite a lot of slang. All right, I'll do a paragraph on the effect of slang on the audience. Why have they chosen to use slang? Are they trying to appeal to a teenage audience? Are they trying to be a bit humorous? Maybe they've used a, a swear word. Why have they done that? Yes, they may put the text in with a swear word, possibly. And you should have three or four separate paragraphs or separate sections that you're going to write in your essay comparing different aspects of the text. Don't waste time saying one text uses um, uh, alliteration, the other text does not. Don't say what's not in the text. And it will be obvious that you haven't planned, that you'll have wasted a paragraph. If you talk about what happens in one text and this is the other text doesn't have this, it's not going to get you any marks. The examiner is looking for a level of organisation. They're looking for some structure between the paragraphs. There should be some connectors linking those paragraphs together to show that you've planned. The third thing that you need to do then is you need to ensure that, you're, that each paragraph is structured. All right. By the time you finish this answer, it's going to be three or four pages, possibly even five or six pages. You need to allow enough time for that. You should be taking 25 minutes to answer question four. It takes as long time, it's worth as many marks as question five, and you need to give it the same amount of time. The, the structure of the paragraph should include quotations from both texts in each paragraph and comments on the equivalent effects of those texts, whether the effects are similar, whether the effects are different. You need to make an attempt to say why the writer has used this language and what effect it's having on the reader. So your three things you need to do. Firstly, bone up on your language features. Old uh, colloquialism, that bone up, meaning that you need to revise them. Okay. Um, 
make sure that you can list 20, 30 language features without looking at anything on a blank piece of paper and then list them again and list them again. Check you know what they mean. Come up with examples for each one. Good way of revising. Do a mind map or something if you want. Record yourself speaking them into your phone. Whatever takes you fancy. Okay, so first is uh, revise language features. Second is organise and plan your answer. All right, and your third point is that you need to make sure each paragraph is of a decent length, is substantial quotes from both texts, and really comments or attempts to comment on the effects of language.